Let's take a closer look at this 1970 Porsche 914 6 that's had the same owner for the past 46 years. It features slant nose style front fenders with the turn signals relocated to the custom front bumper, steel flares with modified rockers, and a rear spoiler. The color was inspired by the early 70s Porsche option of royal purple. The stance is lowered but speed bumps aren't a problem. The side view mirrors were sourced from a 993. And the engine cover has a matching screen instead of the body color panel behind the rear window. Underneath that panel is a 2.8 liter 6 built from a 2.7 liter case by Bob Heinsohn Racing of Kansas City, Missouri which is the perfect segue into the story of this car. The current owner was a partner in the Bob Heinsohn Racing Shop. Heinsohn himself is known for his involvement in Porsche's 914-6 SCCA racing campaign with a host of other famous names during the 1970 to 71 season. In 1976, this car was acquired in a partial trade for a 914 race car and driven from California to Kansas City. Unfortunately, the engine let go five miles short of the destination, and it sat for several years. While attending the 1978 Porsche Parade in Aspen, Colorado, the owner saw Bob Gerritsen's 935 and was inspired. This began the engine build and bodywork design with Bob Heinsohn on this car. No kit or prefab panels were used in the conversion. Over the years, it's had several air opening configurations in the front bumper for the RSR style oil cooler, and that black strip across the bottom is vinyl and could be returned to purple. The interior. Inside, modifications include a Momo steering wheel and a combination oil pressure temperature gauge that replaced the stock fuel gauge. This aftermarket fuel gauge is currently not functioning. The Recaro seats were purchased new in 1978. Door panels and carpets are in great shape, and under the dash is the aftermarket air conditioning that's fully functional. The pedal box, fuse panel, and under dash area is tidy, and there's a trio of power outlets for period accessories like radar detectors. The top of the dash is excellent. Going back into the engine compartment, it's a driver. The Weber carbs aren't overly detailed for show. And there's the MSD ignition box. This is the air conditioning pump, just to the left of the carburetor. And a slightly dizzying tour underneath the battery box a common area for corrosion on these 914s. Let's open it up and take a look at some other often compromised body areas. In the trunk, the rear trunk, the outer corners don't show any signs of major repair. Moving into the front truck, that's a 993 spare tire. That's componentry for the air conditioning system. There's the fuel tank. And heading over to the master cylinder. And even behind the dash is solid and purple. With the spare removed, you'll see the box covering the AC condenser. And then spinning around, you can see the leading edges of the front trunk. The door bottoms are solid. Moving on to the underside, it's a driver, so evidence of road use is definitely visible.
in the pan is solid. And that's the air intake for the AC condenser. The front brakes are 911S aluminum calipers. The only corrosion visible on the pan is this surface spot here at the leading edge. Here's a quick tour of the outer edges of the pan and rockers. This is where the back of the pan meets the firewall, and an attempt to show the round drain hole underneath the battery box area. Again, an area on many cars corroded beyond recognition. The rear suspension arms have been reinforced. The rear brakes are stock 914.6, and those are Bilstein shocks. The exhaust is comprised of headers back to a stainless Borla muffler. The gearbox was rebuilt in 2003 by Eibel Performance of Clearwater, Florida. This is a representative tour of one of the wheel wells. Lighting. Note the directional signals illuminate both directional lights on the tack. Any car that's been driven has flaws and imperfections, so let's dive right in. There's some cracking on the rear edge of the color match roof panel. Here's an imperfection at the top of the right front fender. There's a tiny ding here on the driver's door. I could probably get that fixed too. But Scratch. I decided not Scratch. To. Scratch. 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 There's a tiny mark at the right rear fender flare. There are a few cracks ahead of that on the same flare. And this scratch where the rocker meets the flare. And this crack where the fender meets the spoiler. This is a super slight wave in the center of the rear spoiler. Here's a tiny crack at the top of the rear spoiler lip. This is a close-up of the left front fender. And there are some tiny rock chips on the leading edge of the front trunk. The windshield is pretty good, barring this significant rock chip here. 
and all of the rubber on the car is in good shape. Side and rear glass is all original. The Fuchs alloys are 7x16 up front with 205-55-16 BF Goodwrench G4 Sport Comp 2 tires, date stamp 2017. And the rears are 8x16s with 225-50-16 tires. And this is what 46 years of tire receipts looks like. And the records are extensive. All receipts and handwritten notes from the past 46 years are present. And there are a few photos of the body modifications from the early 1980s present as well. Here's the toolkit and jack. And a number of spares, including an oil tank, a set of heat exchangers, the original Blaupunkt radio with manual, a set of headers with megaphone straight pipes, and the original speedometer. While this 914.6 may not tick all the boxes for the concourse set, if the behind-the-wheel experience is important, this one delivers.